Hello, I'm Georgie Pick. I'm the Head of Science at ARC Pioneer Academy. We are a relatively new school in Barnet in North London. So I'm in my fifth year of teaching science um, and I'm in my third year at this school. We have been teaching mastery since it started in 2019, so we're in our third year here of teaching science mastery. I teach all three year groups that we have here, which is year seven, eight and nine. So since using Science Mastery, one of the biggest changes in my teaching has been the structure. So I've never really been one to use exit tickets before, but the structure of Science Mastery lessons where it always finishes with an exit ticket and then we have time to use a fix-it task in the next lesson has been really, really helpful because it has helped me identify misconceptions from that particular lesson and then given me a time and ideas on how to fix those misconceptions with pupils. I would say science mastery lessons are much more structured than any lessons I've taught before and not just structured for that one lesson but structured across the whole topic and the whole curriculum in the sense that all lessons follow the same pattern so they all start with a do now, they all have time for a fix it task, there's always um, a section of teacher exposition which could be um, a simple exposition or it could be a demo or something like that. A particular success that I've seen has been with some of our new staff, especially when we have had ECTs in the department. Um, Science Mastery gives them such a good base of everything that pupils need to know and what you could do to successfully teach them. So ECTs really have the time to practice their exposition and to think about exactly what they're doing in the classroom. I am able to use my time quite differently now that I'm teaching science mastery. I no longer have to spend time making PowerPoints or designing worksheets or scrolling through TES to try and find something that I'll have to adapt in lots of different ways. Um, so science mastery provides everything that we need as a base. I now spend most of my time doing intellectual preparation before the lesson, so thinking deeply about what is it I'm teaching and how I'm going to explain it to pupils rather than what's going to be on the board for them to look at because that is already set. I've had members in my department who have attended the practical and inquiry skills training and a highlight for them was really um, where they got to discuss with other people in the training why they would do certain practicals and was it worth it, what are the teaching points going to be and they've brought that back to co-planning for us, for us to look at different practicals that we might have previously done and actually we've thought why are we doing this, is it going to be worth it, is it going to be a good use of people's time and learning, so that has been really really useful. Having meetings with Shauna, who's our development lead at the beginning of the year, was really useful in setting our expectations and setting out what we as a school want to get out of Science Mastery. We had the chance to be given the time to come up with three priorities for our department that are linked to Science Mastery and actually discuss with Shauna how we were going to implement that and what the impacts would be and how we're going to know that we've been successful. At this school we've taught science mastery the whole time with all pupils but comparing with pupils I've taught before in previous schools in non-science mastery lessons I'd say that the pupils are a lot more focused because they always know what's going to come. The structure of the lesson is always the same so pupils know they're always going to be expected to do a do now, we're always going to do a fix it task, they're always going to be expected to do independent work so it takes off some of the cognitive load where they might be thinking what's going to happen in this lesson. Our pupils also have shown since starting Science Mastery lessons that they have really, really good residual knowledge and they can remember facts very well. Um, and I think that's due to a lot of repetition in the do nows throughout the topic and then as topics go through, going back to previous topics. This is shown in the data that we've done for internal assessments where pupils have done exceptionally well in multiple choice questions where it's knowledge being tested. I have noticed a change in pupils' knowledge of science in the real world and one of the reasons for that is that Science Mastery gives us science in the news articles and we have scientists in the spotlight to study and pupils really, really enjoy that and they like reading news articles, following a topic um, 
that is linked to that news article and it allows them to put that into practice or to think why am I actually learning about this and it seems like people's engagement has really increased because they really look forward to reading those news articles um, and they ask when are we going to read another one and some of them are even now reading science news articles outside of school which is fantastic. We found the maths and science lessons to be really, really successful and we really like them. Um, we, what we really like in particular is the way they're linked to the maths curriculum that pupils in our school also follow with the mastery maths. So the way that everything is taught is the same as maths teach it, um, models are used in the same way and then there's usually specific maths examples and specific science examples linked in as well that's really, really useful. They're also mapped really well in the curriculum so often we in science will be teaching a skill after they've done it in maths um, that makes it a little bit easier for us and then we can put our science spin on it as well and put it into context rather than just thinking about pupils not being able to do a math skill and where do we go from there. For teachers starting Science Mastery this year, the biggest piece of advice I would give is to do the intellectual preparation and to use all the documents that you're given. There's an incredible amount of work that's gone into all of those documents and any question that you could probably have about a, about a lesson could be answered in those documents. Um, so really, really get into it. I think the most successful thing that's happened with us is the way we use our time to go through different lessons, to go through the curriculum overview, to use the teacher preparation booklets um, so that we can really think deeply about the subject. That's the thing that's probably had the biggest impact on our pupils. I would really recommend Science Mastery for any schools that are looking um, to see impact in their science curriculum and for their pupils' science knowledge to really, really develop in a short space of time. Also, it's really great for developing teacher expertise. And as a bonus, it really saves teachers' time.